so let's get started. So today I'm going to be rendering some anime and I wanted to show you guys how universal the fundamentals are, how easy it is to approach them and how applicable they are to you. So for all those anime artists or artists who are geared towards style, who have a goal for style, um, they tend to say it as if it's like a, an excuse to jump out of the fundamental studies, as an excuse not to study fundamentals or still lifes or form studies or what have you. It's not. A style will benefit from realism because you, style is the deliberate breaking of the rules of realism. But there are some rules in that realism you, you're not going to break. Um, so today I'm going to be coloring Sasuchi's, um, is that how I pronounce it? Sasuchi, Sasuchi, ha, Sasuchi, right? Sasuchi95, that's the name of her YouTube channel. And uh, I will be linking her Instagram page as well. She was kind enough to let me use her line art. So cool of her. Thank you so much. I was having the hardest time finding line art that wasn't AI, and I really wanted to keep it pure, no AI. So thank you so much. I'm honored to color your stuff. So I just wanted to start with the basics, 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 like the absolute baseline basics. And the most important basic, number one to learn, is where the main core shadows are. Uh, so we have to imagine that there's, so I have a very simple background. The reason I have a grayish whitish background is like a grayish background. The reason why I have a gray background is because I don't want a background that's too bright or too dark because that'll mess with my colors. The best colors live in the grays and these gray tones right here. Midtones are magic. Midtones is where everything lives. White and black are color killers. So you don't want to draw and paint with this like extreme saturation or extreme darkness because that's how you end up getting that muddy look. If you want that fresh, clean look to your art, especially if you have line art, you really want to use colors that are more forgiving. And all the colors that are forgiving, that are easy to work with, that are that are cooperative, let's say, are the ones that stem from gray. And the first thing I'm going to do, the first color I'm going to lay down is her skin tone. And I'm going to just use a, a peachy skin tone, something very standard. And the best skin tones are on the grays and they're on this line right here. These are the best places to pick skin tones. And so th that's where I'm going to pick this uh, value today. So I'm just going to pick any standard cluster of mid-tones right now. I'm not very specific on exactly which complexion or which um, uh, 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 like ethnicity I'm painting from or anything like that. Really, I'm just strictly picking from a cluster of mid-tones that I know will be really good for this skin tone. And I don't know if this is an original character. Is it an original character? Oh, you're gonna take notes? Woo! Is it an original character? Um, do you uh, do you have any specific colors for the hair or can I just use whatever I want? And for the eyes? Because I know you have the original, which you colored, which is fabulous. Um, uh, so do you want me to copy those colors or do you want me to just add my own? Oh, it's your original character. Okay, cool. So I'm picking a cluster of these values here. And um, basically what I want to do is find the peachy version of the darks. And as I get darker, I'm also sliding the, the tone into more purple. So this is without purple. This is without purple. This is with purple, meaning I've slid down all the way to the deepest red that I can get off the slider. That means I've cooled down the red. So compare a red from here to a red from here. This looks more purple. So we want that. We want that for shadow. So that's the kind of value I'm picking for these uh, darks. So as I get darker, I get more purple. As I get lighter, I get more yellow. So this one and this one, what I'm going to do is slide upward and find a yellowy version of that highlighter. So this is a highlighter. I'm going to also find this and slide upward and also pick from a lighter hue. So I'm finding like lighter versions and those are the ones I'm going to use. So I'm going to start with this mid-tone here and I'm just going to use it under these lines. And it's going to set a nice base for that peachy look. And just so I'm not dealing with constant erasing, what I'm going to do is use my brush to, I'll use the same hard round, to kind of have a nice clean lasso. 
So bear with me. This is basically the lasso stage of every critique hour. Okay. And I thought it might be fun to explore um, some anime because I, I, I've been kind of critiquing people's cartoony sketches, if you guys have noticed, in the Blitz Critique Hours. And what that's done is that it's kind of shown me that this isn't a topic that's really discussed all too much. Professional artists talking about um, very, very cartoony styles um, on a very serious rendering uh, stage. And I want to do that. I want to give them that because nobody seems to be doing that. And I want to talk about how to make very, very cartoony styles from anime to whatever you want to call it. I, I consider anime cartoons um, just because it gets away with that um, cell shading kind of animated cartoon type uh, aesthetic. So I just call it that because I'm a boomer. And I'm just, um, just cleaning up here. Okay, so let me clean up some more here. So now that I have that nice and locked, I'm going to add some shadows. So before I add the shadows, I'm actually going to draw a big old sphere with the same skin tone right here, right beside. It's also going to have a bit of a oval shape. And I'm going to render this sphere exactly the way I would this face if it had no features on it. So what does that mean? That means that I'm gonna treat this as if it's just a skin tone sphere. And hopefully, fingers crossed, that's going to make something click in your brain. Something is gonna click there in your brain and you're gonna be like, oh crap, that's exactly what I should be doing. So I'm gonna pick one of these values, I'm gonna pick the darker one first. I'm gonna lower my opacity while having full color, and I'm gonna add a core shadow to this skin colored sphere, meaning that the light is coming from top down. I'm gonna to pick this yellow kind of brightest point, and I'm also with low opacity, shrinking my brush as I apply more paint. And I'm eventually going to make this skin toned sphere a reference for me as I start rendering. All right, so this skin tone sphere is also made of like a see through value. So I'm going to use a bit of subsurface scattering, meaning I'm going to include a lot of that red in there. And then I'm also going to get pure white on low opacity. This is to account for the fact that the skin is reflective. And I'm also gonna just drop that right onto the top. White desaturates, we want that. There's a lot of desaturation points on the skin. Unfortunately, life isn't that easy. So what happens is the human head has a lot of complicated contours and turns and, and changes. So this isn't just a human head, this is a stylized head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to adjust it so it matches the same type of anime standard template head. Okay, everybody with me? So now it's a very, very easily recognizable object. Hey, that's a face. I can see the indentation of the eye sockets. I can see the chin. I can see all of it. Okay, there we go. So something just happened. We just added surface contours. These surface contours are gonna are changing the game a little bit. This means I have to change the shading on this skin shaped eyeball into something else. So now we have indentation. Someone got their thumbs and they push the clay in all the way to make two holes. They also push the nose out, they pinched it out. So they kind of pinched out the nose. And then they also pinched out or added a little ball of clay and then, and then kind of allowed it to mix in and added a chin. So what does that mean? That means we have new objects. So if I were to draw the surface contours, they look something like that for the eye sockets. And then they do something like this for the nose. I mean, don't mind my shitty lines. 
okay, maybe I should do a better job. <laughs> and then they do something like this for the chin. Like they're just trying to stick out. Okay, so these surface contours that I just added, I have to adjust. So now I'm gonna lock the layer, I'm gonna grab this. So this isn't how you should do it. This is me teaching you the theory of how it works. This is how it works. You can just go straight in with the, with a, with a head-shaped skin tone ball. Do you know what I'm saying? You guys don't have to do it this way. So this isn't me telling you this is one way to paint, rely on, liquefy. No, no, this is me just showing you the physics and how it works. So I'm adding two holes for the eye sockets and I'm going to add a shadow, but really technically what happens is the matter happens first and the light happens second. So I'm gonna add the light of the nose and then right after that is the shadow of the nose. And then I'm going to add the light of the chin and that also pushed out the lips a little bit. And so now we have this really, really detailed, much more detailed than a sphere rendition of what a human head, human quote unquote head does. So now I'm just gonna render it so it looks a little bit better. And these exact values I'm using on this face in a second. So this is the theory, all right, you guys? Create the distinction in your mind. This is the theory. So now I'm just rendering mostly based off muscle memory and I'm using all those skin tones that I already planned here. I'm using them to my advantage. As you know, there's gonna be even more detailing, the lips, the nostrils, the details, the edges, the creases, the contours, the folds, everything happens after this point. And so we can't use soft brush for the whole thing. We have to start using blocker a little bit. The blocking brush is really important because it helps you address a lot of the edges that the lines are indicating. And so obviously this isn't exactly what I'm doing here. I'm gonna use this as a reference, but this is the theory behind it, all right? This is how easy it is for you to mix style and re realism. Mixing style and realism is not hard if you remember that realism is not here to deconstruct your style, it's to prove that it exists. So this, and the reason why realistic hybrid anime is so charming is because it makes anime, which is so not reality, reality, right? That's why people love it. They foam at the mouth for it because they think that it's just the best thing that ever happened because it's, it's, it's everything that re anime provides and more, which is that charm, that fantasy, that caricaturized, almost uh, uh, exaggeration of human beauty, but also that bit of wonder, you know, it's a different type of human. It's not exactly human. It's the best of what we, you know, what we look like, kind of like the biggest eyes and the nicest face and all of that. So it's very charming. It's like Barbie dolls. People just get to have a doll and dress it up the way they want. And that's why anime is so charming to a lot of people. And you add realism to that, suddenly it's not cartoons anymore. Suddenly it's reality. There's light and there's physics and there's space. So this is exactly what I'm going to be doing on this face. So now we jump back to this face. I'm locking it and I'm going to grab every one of these shadows, which have I've proven to myself that are successful. And I'm going to use them exactly where I feel like they're needed. Okay, so the very first ones are the contours of the eyes as two holes in the face. And though they meet, seem so inconsequential, these shadows will make a huge difference in a second. So light, dark, light, dark. And then of course we have the deeper shadow of the um, neckline. All right, so I'm just gonna throw that there. Uh, let me erase out the, the, the finger real quick. Love the way you drew the hand, Sasuji. You're so good, dude. And I'm just gonna lock it. And sorry, I did a bad erasing just now. Okay, so I'm locking that. So again, we go back to, this is all soft brush, by the way. I'm not using any fancy soft brushes or brushes in general. I'm only using my brushes, which is the blocking brush. So now based off Sesuchi's drawing, what I'm gonna do 
is remember the contours remember when i messed with like liquify well we already have these conditions applied so all i'm going to do now is just add these highlights wherever she's indicated already that the face is is contoured so there's a little bit on the nose a little bit on the forehead the upper lip the lower lip the upper lip <laughs> the not the upper upper lip the upper lip itself and then the dimples that exist on either side of the lip I've covered this so many times the lips are cylindrical the little shadows here and there then there's the shadow of the, so I'm using a more red shadow around the mouth because the mouth is naturally more red. You can do the same thing with the nose, but I just want to establish a nice strong core shadow for the nose. So you see that all the basic rules of portraits are still applicable here. No value sharing. And then I'm just going to get my blocking brush and I'm going to block in the cheeks. So the side of the nose needs to be separated because it's not all just melted together. We're trying to do realism. So how do we pull that off? By remembering that our edges are the most important thing. Okay, and then we've got, I'm just gonna block in the chin because the chin sometimes has a little bit of a, of a hard edge right there. And there's a little shadow right there. And this beard shadow, there's a reason I call it the beard shadow. It just looks like a big old beard on the face, right? So that's what I'm using. And the eyes, I'm not talking about them yet. The most important stuff about doing hybrid anime realism is the, this step right here, the core shadows. It's so easy to shade eyes. You could literally do it in the most haphazard way possible and it will still look good because it's, it's anime. Anime eyes are born to look good. They look good no matter what. You got a thick lash line, you got a big iris, um, you've got big lashes, you've got deep set eye sockets, you've got it all. Distance between the eyes and the eyebrows, that's a big giveaway for beauty standard. And you've got the beauty triangle, meaning you've big eyes, small nose, small mouth. So it's automatically going to look quote unquote pretty. So don't worry so much about the eyes, worry about the face. All right. And then so now that I'm done with that, I'm going to try to focus on the eyebrow eye socket area. So now I'm zooming in. So uh, we mean business now. Now that we're zooming in, it means we're done the big stuff. So now I'm gonna lay in some, or block in, upper eyelid highlight, upper eyelid eye socket line. This is a big one, very important one, right there. And I'm not sure why I didn't add in the eyebrows, but I'll do them in a second. Um, and I'm going to go one step darker. So this value darkened even deeper. This is for the deeper values, the black, the, all those just extra colors. Um, remember which layer I had these on? Oh, they're right there. Okay. So this is a really important one right here. So I need that dark one prepared. That's why I delay my contrast. I don't even have the whitest white in my palette because I don't like to encourage students to do crazy stuff with their contrast too early. Um, so that's why I prepare these later but a nice block right there. I don't want it to be too strong. And then a gentle block here. Since her eyes are closed, the eye socket is less, less eye socket. It's just more of a, of a plain slide. I'm going to add in the eye socket of the lower crease. You see that? The eyes kind of when they close, there's a little crease. It also happens on the other eye but I wanna use kind of a red one. This one's open, so the crease is kind of closed off. Okay, let me save this before my Photoshop crashes. Save, okay, go away. And, um, and then I'm just nice, strong blocking brush. We're not playing games here. Um, so this blocking brush is really, really important uh, it means that we're setting the stage for where most of our valleys are coming from, the planes, the surfaces, and I'm doing basic top-down light source. I'm not doing anything complex. All right, so now that we have all this, I need to block in some whiter yellows, meaning that I'm gonna pick the color I wanna rise from, go to the slider, slide up into yellow, and then slide on an angle, not directly up, slide on an angle, to white, meaning I end up with this one. 
right? It's pretty bright, but it's got a lot of yellow and it's got a lot of white. It looks kind of grayish. You want it to look like that. It's one of the brightest points of the face, but it's also desaturated. And so that's what I'm adding here. And this is basic 14 day challenge values, like light source, top down stuff. It's nothing fancy at all. A little bit of a highlight for the Cupid's bow, maybe a slightly bigger upper lip. I wanna copy everything that she did. I don't wanna change a single line. The only adjustments I'm gonna make maybe are a little bit of symmetry changes here and there but the style is gonna stay intact because I'm trying to prove a point. I'm trying to show you, you don't have to change your identity as an anime fan or anime artist um, or, or that you don't have to you know, shed all of that completely. You can keep all of that right where it is. If you just learn a little bit of form, it'll take your art all the way. So I'm adding a little bit of extra highlight on the upper lid. And I'm also going to start adding something of a whiter film for the white of the eyes at this stage. Okay. Oops. The eyeball of the eye also has its own shadows. It's got the shadow of the upper lash line, whole bunch of shadows. You can make this a soft shadow. You can make it a sharp shadow. Do whatever you want as long as it's there, as long as it exists but there's also the core shadow of the whole eyeball as well, because it's an eyeball, so it has an outward projection. Yes, even if it's anime, you still wanna pretend there's some form going on. And then I'm going to now just blend a little bit. And I'm gonna start blending anything that I feel like is not an edge and doesn't need an edge. Okay, and so All right, blending here, blending all of the fattier areas of the face. So I am gonna do something a little bit crazy. Though I'm not gonna touch the lines and the edges they portrayed, the style, I'm not gonna move it. I will replace the line with a, an edge. I will replace it with a shade that represents that part of the contour in that space. And I'm just going to shift my, my uh, skin tones over just a little bit. Oops. Um, zero. I'm just going to shift them over just a bit. No, that's too much. Just like maybe into four or two. Nothing too big. Just a small shift just because my eyes are feeling like I need to. There's the little eye corner highlighter that you add into portraits. And there's the connection of the inner socket with the cheek, of the inner eyelid of the eye socket with the cheek. Sometimes it's there. We can blend that away if we don't like it. And that connects right up into the eyelid. And because I shifted things away from red, now I can bring in on the on color or something, whatever you wanna, however you wanna mess with your colors, brush modes, you wanna paint it in with raw color, do whatever you want. I'm gonna bring in with color mode, some redness in the lips. And then I'm gonna switch over to maybe normal. I don't wanna add lipstick because I wanna want to keep it generally no makeup. I really just wanna mess with what I have access to here. I'm gonna put a big block. Actually, I'm just gonna use soft brush for this. And I'm gonna put a big block of highlight just on the cheeks. And you see how the cheeks actually look plump? Like they actually look like they're catching light and they're sticking out. Because that's what these indentations here are doing. They're just telling us that her cheeks are sticking out, catching some light. And then there's a little bit of light climbing up on the chin. There's the two corners of the mouth. As soon as I'm done laying down these colors, what will happen is I will merge everything. And I will start basically uh, rendering on a much more realistic scale the anatomy, as if it was a model, as if it was a 3D model. Right, so I'm basically all I'm doing is just laying down all the most important essential values. Adding whatever contrast I feel like is necessary. And next time, if I can, obviously today I don't think I'm going to be able to, but next time uh, I will try to do the hair and the body. 
But for now, I really want to push the face as far as possible. All right, and then I'm going to just blend over here. I'm going to try to do as much as I can before I finally merge. And this, this gray tone that I used for the eyes, you can do anything you want. You don't have to use this gray tone. You can use a more white white. You can use a blue if her eyes are going to be colored. I'm just going to try to pick a color I can work with. But I want to make it look like there's a, a bump, like a little belly to the eyeball. Okay, and then that is coming up into the cheek. The cheek is connecting to the chin just a little bit. There's a little bit of a contour sharing here. And then I'm going to get this skin tone, make, maybe make it a little bit more red, make it a little bit more of one of these like kind of makeup-y pinks, these um, fuchsias, and I'm just going to add a little bit of that fuchsia just on the edge of the face, just to show where all that blush is. A little bit on the nose, a little bit on the upper lip. If you match blush and lipstick together, it looks great because it makes it look like all one blood, one complexion. And you can, if you want to, add a little Cupid's bow indentation. But I really like the way she drew the lip as if the upper lip is kind of uh, sticking out quite a bit. So I'm going to leave that alone. And then again, just continuously like the tug of war of blending and edges management. And then in a new layer with soft brush, I'm going to see if I can push contrast one more time with some of these colors. So meaning this chin area, I want to respect it. So I'm going to radially drop into the chin and then delete right there. And then I'm going to find anywhere else where I may have some little things that may need it to be addressed. So right here for the nostril and the other nostril that I feel like would be visible from this side. So just because I'm going to treat it like a 3D model, I'm going to try to find the other nostril, which is like me, just like right there. Okay, and then there's the cast shadow of the nose. So in order to do that, I need a nice ready kind of a surface for it to fall on. I may add that at the end. I don't know. Maybe I want to add it now. And really what it what it, it is is just a triangle. That's just to signify that the light is really there. It's really important shadow, but it's so easy to do. It's so easy to pull off. Okay, so this is a whole lot of work we've done on just the face, which is worth it. It's really worth it. You will thank yourself in the future because the eyes everybody knows they're gonna look good the 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 hair the shine all of that that good stuff it's all gonna look great in the end it's all gonna read but the stuff that's forgotten by some hybrid anime artists is this stuff the core shadow the sculpting the 3d model aspect of everything and then one more time I'm gonna grab this highlighter and I'm gonna climb with soft brush on low opacity in a new layer i'm going to climb into the highlights one more time i'm going to actually spike them up a bit more this means that we are doing one more insurance brush stroke to assure that we really are thinking about the core shadow so you see these extra highlights here we're thinking about this eyeball and then we're going to do that as well, but on the shadows. So we're gonna grab this guy and maybe mix it with this guy. Low opacity, soft brush, new layer. And we're gonna do one more brush stroke, ensuring, ensuring this entire area is blocking the light one more time. And then I'm just gonna delete away at what I don't need. So I don't need any more shadow on the chin. All I really need is just a little bit more of, of that, remembering that the, the shadow of the light exists. See that little extra shadow we got there? I'm going to just zoom in and show you those two extra levels we added. This is before, this is after. See that plumpness? It just plumped everything out. And that is the power of knowing your sphere. This is all sphere knowledge. All of this is just knowledge of the sphere. That's it. Okay, just a little bit of extra push. Every time you respect 
the sphere and the forms and the essential shapes behind and underneath everything in this world, the more you will be rewarded in your art. And I'm going to add that little bump of the eyelid. I'm going to add another little bump right here. And then I'm going to merge the layers and see if I can render something fun with the eyes. So every one of these creases is a cylinder. So we know how to paint cylinders, right? Each one just has a shadow. That's it. That's it. Shadow, sorry, light shadow, light shadow, light shadow. If you start to learn that pattern, if you really start to learn it, not just hear me say it, but really respect the light, dark, light pattern. Oh man, your work will go so far. It will go so far. And then right here, I'm just going to add that last little bump in the crease making it a little sharper the closer we get to that crease. This is rendering. You're actually rendering right now. This is rendering. This is all it is. You're sharpening edges. You're exaggerating shadows. You are not exaggerating beyond reason, obviously. You are finding the little worlds within worlds of creases and edges, and you are building. You are building the deepest points, the furthest points that stick out to the light, the points that reject the light the most. And that's all it is, boys and girls. It's just, it's just more of the same. And so the nose in anime, what I love about it is that it's got this way of some of the, you know, some of the hybrid anime realism. What I like about it is it's got this way of, um, oh, they're always picking the best time of day, the best light, the best shading. So the best thing to do is to actually draw with, get a picture of the time of day, whatever background sunset, sunrise, a blue sky, and actually put it behind your drawing while you're drawing. It'll help boost and move your values where they need to go. So I think that's what a lot of these manga artists or these, these splash artists do is that they remember that it's part of one big light environment. And that's something I'm always going on about. So now that I'm kind of nearing the end, I'm almost about to bl uh, blend all the lines together. Right now, I want to start building some of those really key important creases, the two lip corners, the crease, the little shadow of every nostril. Every little shadow has its own nostril like that. The nostril holes, which you don't have to make too dark. They may not match a character like that. And then I'm just blending out these little creases here, making sure they look like and feel like skin. That's bumped up because when you smile, your skin doesn't just stay like that. It, it creases up. And so that's all we're doing. We're just pretending she's real. We're just pretending she exists from her anatomy to her smile, to her skin, to her muscles, to the world around her, to the light that is falling on her. That is all realism is. You're just adding light and form and material. Light form material, light form material, write that back to me. Okay, so I think it's the moment of truth. We are ready to blur all these, or blend all these layers together. But before I do, just one more little, you see how much time I spend worrying about the form. So before I do that, I actually have to try to set, let's look at that, without the lines. It kind of looks good, but we're not done yet. Um, so what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to, select just the face and I'm going to lock these lines and I'm going to change their color so that they're easier to blend in. For the nose, I'm going to change the color of the nose. I still need these lines. They're important because they're signaling where the edges are. I'm going to change. I'm going to pick this darkest one right here and I'm just going to paint these lines into a skin tone. I'm going to keep some lines though. The lashes can stay black. But anywhere we have skin, skin folds, contours, all of that, they're all getting changed. All right, there's that. And then of course there's the lips, which may need a lighter value. I'm gonna mix the two actually. The two corners need a slightly darker value. I'm gonna pick one that's really red. Just there. All right. And so now we have these lines we can merge down. One thing I don't want to do is connect the eyes just yet. 
Okay, so I'm leaving anything else I've merged down. So the lips are going to be merged down. The eyes are going to be merged down. Um, so, I mean, the eyes are not going to be merged down. The nose is going to be merged down. But I want to disconnect the eyes for just a second, just because I want to blend a little bit more. So I disconnected the eyes, and now I'm just merging down. Boom, it's done. Now the lines are part of the face, okay? And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna make some quick anatomy adjustments, just so that chin that's really sharp there, that can feel a little bit more rounded. So just jumping really quickly into liquify, and and then just bumping that chin out, just like that. Just so it looks a little bit more anatomically accurate. All right, and so now more of the same. So I'm going to get a new layer. Okay, locking this layer. I'm gonna get a new layer and I'm going to, this, this is my new layer. And I'm just gonna add in some simple radial shades to help move it along. So I'm just gonna get a dark red and a new layer, low opacity. And to take a look at this, this is the stuff I taught you guys before. I'm basically radially dropping the lips into like this crease. And I'm deleting everything under that line. This is why I said your lines are important because they signal where these edges are. See that? See how three-dimensional the lips look now? With just a little bit of crease radial shading. All right, don't forget who taught you this. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna clean up a little bit more. All right, I'm merging that down. And then you see these little two bumps here? We don't need them that much anymore since now we have some edges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend them away into a, like a crease. I could have blended upward, I could have blended downward. It really doesn't matter. It's as long as in the end you have like a crease. So the edge is just there. Okay, so that means we're also going to expand on this little dimple on the edges of the lips right there. We're also going to blend that. Thank you so much for these line, these lines, Sasuchi. You're the best. I was going to render some random stuff. Um, thank you so much. This is such a great drawing to render. You have all these folds. You have all this cool stuff happening. I really appreciate it. Okay. And then for the nostril, really, really super easy. Yeah, it looks pretty scary, right? It looks like it's hard to take on so many different edges. It looks difficult, challenging. But believe me, all you have to do is remember that the nostril holes have two really important things. The edge at the top and the crease, the, the sorry, the, the blending at the bottom. That's it. As long as you remember that, your nostrils will always look realistic. The edge at the top, the blending at the bottom. Okay, and then there's a little dimple. This is the, the kind of the fold of the nostril. It's small, don't overdo it, or else she'll look like she has a nosebleed. And then um, same thing on the other side. But now we've got this line here, which is where the style had a leftover line. We can get rid of that now. We don't really need it that much. All we need is the other nostril signaling that change in the angle. Again, just the edge at the top and the blending at the bottom. We're just blending away. I'll fix the perspective, all of that. I really don't care about that. I have liquify at my disposal. As long as I remember that all that matters is these edges. That's it. A little bit of shadow there and a little bit there. So all we wanna do is just show, she kind of has her head tilted back, so we wanna show some nostrils. Remember that line Sasuchi had? Well, that line is still there, but as an edge, just like that. So you guys, we're on your side. Us realism people who always study life drawings and anatomy and, and sketch portraits and the sorrow heads in our gray background, grayscale, sad club. 
<laughs> we're not boring artists. We actually care about form because form is it. We are we are like the temple keepers of the of the god of form. We we kind of we know that there can be fun ways to draw. We know there's fun interpretations, but for now we know that if we dedicated a little bit of extra time to studying form studies and all of that we will we will be paid back we will be rewarded so that's all it really is all those artists you see slaving away on form studies they're doing it for a reason because when it comes down to it they have all the power they can learn any style they want and dress it up with as much realism as they want i'm just flipping the canvas just so i can assess my perspective that nostril i drew wasn't perfect and then the other nostril here and see this nostril i need an edge and so what I'm going to do is rotate, grab my hard brush, which is my marker, and I'm going to really like exaggerate this edge right here. So because I'm doing details now, I'm going to need to increase the, actually, no, I'm not going to increase the size of the canvas. That's crazy. Um, I'm going to just add a little block there and I'm going to grab that whitest white. And that's going to help me add that block in, but also create a bit of contrast. So it's a nice little change, a nice, nice little shift. And then I'm going to zoom out. I like how the nose looks. It's a little small based off where we were left off with the style. I may enlarge it just a little bit. Just because now as you start doing more anime, what happens as you start doing more realism, what, ha what happens is that people recognize when something is slightly off. So it's really up to you. You want to keep the nose that small. You want to do some nostril detail. You want to do a little bit more. It's really up to you. But because we made the nose realistic, we may need to make it match what we're doing here. So we're just finding the realistic version, adding realism. So there's the nose without it, and there's the nose with it. I'm gonna just put it in the same place so I don't use, lose likeness. So it's really up to you, and when you're doing yours, like how you want to interpret the nose. And so I'm just gonna keep it there. I'm gonna flip the canvas. I'm okay with where it is. And then now I'm just gonna uh, kind of see if I can push the shape to match that initial kind of upward dent in the nose so just a cute little bump in the nose okay so sometimes we can get rid of contrast in areas where we're not exactly in total need of it so you see these extra lines we can just lighten them and kind of get them out of the way just like that so those extra lines here and there this one I want to keep because it's an overlap but I can get rid of the majority of these lines and leave just that that line there, that edge. And then sometimes I like to get dodge tool and kind of just add that little bit of highlight. Be careful with dodge tool. It's not a tool that you can just use anywhere you want. Use it in a way that represents what's actually happening in the highlight. So there's a, a line of highlight. I'm going to exaggerate it so you guys can see. This is the path of the light. This is the path of the light. This is the path of the light. So this is where you're going to find highlights. And so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just applying these little additions, kind of like just to show she's maybe wearing lip gloss or something like that. Be careful with Dodge Tool. Adds this kind of like almost ugly burned look to, uh, to what it's touching. So be careful with it. Sometimes it oversaturates and you want to follow it with a sponge tool. And I'm just adding these highlights to the eyelids. I'm not done with the eyelids just yet. And I really want to start connecting the edges to the face. So this edge right here, what I'm going to do is get soft brush and I'm going to find like this middle tone. I'm going to use some of the line value. So watch this. This is how I get rid of this edge. Some of the line value. Some of the skin tone value. And then I find this middle ground and that's what I use across the entire edge right here. And I do that again for areas where I have changes in values until eventually that edge is gone. I mean, that line is gone and all I have left over is a nice clean edge. And that's what exists in the real world. We don't actually have lines in the real world. We have only edges. 
So you could have kept the line. You could have stopped where I where, before I did this. But you know, you're already being rewarded for having so many core shadows. So you could have stopped. You don't have to go as far as I do. You can keep the nose exactly how it was before. The point is now what you're doing is sculpting. Now any style you choose to pursue, it's going to look good because it has been sculpted. And I'm just going to do a bit more around here. But I want that value for the space under the neck. I need that edge there or else I don't know where the edge of the chin is and the edge of the neck is. See that? Line replaced. And I'll clean that up in a second. Okay, so I'm just going to fix this little patch I've got here and then merge down. And I'm just going to um, see these little bumps here I have left over. I'm just going to clean those. And then when I'm done done, what I'm going to do is I'm really going to go in and um, clean up a lot of stuff. I'm just going to add some extra stuff here and there just to make it look like it's sparkling and kind of in the light, just adding a bit of that glamour, I guess we can say that anime glamour. And now I'm going to do the eyes. So the eyes are right here. What we want to do is show that the eyes have this shadowy realism to it. And so when lashes look realistic, what they do is they have, um, so what eyes did, she, oh, they're so complex and yellow. Um, maybe I can try a yellow green -y kind of con con like concoction here. So I'm gonna add in that base color. I'm gonna lock it in. So yeah, lashes need to have a um, shadow surrounding them for them to feel like they're actually growing. We don't wanna, obviously, if we're trying to paint realistically, we don't want to, um, pretend that we're looking at, uh, you know, a, a real, like just like lash after lash, actual lashes. We're not trying to do that. What we're trying to do is create the illusion of texture. So I'm just going to add a ring of green, just anything that I fancy at the moment, really nothing specific. I like how you thicken the line at the top. That's exactly how it works. And I'm going to, this eye color may change, and then I'm going to uh, add that shadow at the very top. It's a really, really important shadow for making eyes look realistic. Okay, so again, I'm not an anime artist, so I don't know all the tricks to making eyes look beautiful and sparkly. Y'all have that like magic, like I don't know where it is. Where do you go to learn these tricks? But unfortunately, I don't know them all. And so I'm just going to be like uh, highlighting this area here. Oopsie. That's locked. And I'm trying to just uh, find a combination that works. And then I'm just adding like greens and yellow. Sometimes it's green and yellow. Sometimes it's yellow, green, yellow. So I'm just trying to do something fun. And I always love a bit of turquoise. It's my favorite color. So one of my favorite colors. So I'm just going to slap that in there as well. Then getting my pencil brush on pure black. And I'm just throwing in something there. So now that I changed this color, what I want to do is the white of the eyes has to match. So I just pick any of the cools I have and I throw that in the white of the eyes because it's not going to look nice if it's gray. It has to match the eyes. Eventually, they'll just be part of the same thing. And then back to the line art. I'm going to keep trying to replace this line art with like a realism equivalent. So that black there, maybe even some of the black here gets replaced a bit. I don't want it to look too washed out. And then at this point, I actually feel safe enough to merge the eyes down. And then what I'm going to do is just start creating almost a, oh, it's still locked, almost like a shadowy look to the edge of the eye right up here. You see that kind of shadow I'm adding? That's really what's going to make it look good. 
and actually realistic. So again, I'm not an anime pro. I don't know every single rule. I know there's rules to certain templates. I don't know them all. All I know is the rules of realism and I'm applying what I can. And then I'm gonna keep trying to mess around with this area here. And then dodge tool around the eyes is one of the only places you can actually get away with it because it really does kind of sometimes look that vibrant. I'm going to, I know you added this lash line. I'm gonna keep this lash line and combine it here. Um, but I'm gonna try to get rid of this one and kind of turn it into a shadow. So these are the alterations I mentioned. Just so, just so we have some realism in the anatomy of the eye. I'm gonna get a pink, just like a really, really pink pink. And I'm gonna use it, instead of that lash line, I'm gonna use it on the edge of the eye. I'm gonna just mess around with light pink, baby pink, and I'm gonna use it just along here. So I have a water line now. It's okay if it doesn't look great because you zoom out, eventually assess everything, you check the navigator, all of that good stuff. And then I'm blending the lower eyelid, merging this eye down like all the way to the skin tone layer. And I'm blending that. And then I'm gonna get like any of those shadowy colors I have, maybe this one. And I'm gonna use it to introduce the lash line. And this lash line does come out on top of the edge and it moves around. And that, lot, that water line travels all the way through. It can even touch the very edges at the top. So you see, we're not touching the outline of the anime style. We are just introducing certain rules, fundamentals here and there that promote the feeling that this can blink, that this can move. And I'm adding just a bit of those little touches. It doesn't have to be a lot, but it goes a long way. And then just over here, I'm gonna add in a lash equivalent of what you added. Just lashes, straight up lashes. Anime, because we're messing with a combination of anime and, um, and realism, we can throw in some extra lashes, more lashes than we would have thrown if it was a just a straight up realistic drawing because we never want to throw lots of lashes because then it's just distracting to the viewer. But because the eye has all these focal point markers, we can get away with it. And then I'm blending that down. And then I'm just gonna get the dodge tool or you know something. So that's my lashes. Um, I'm just gonna get something to kind of boost the eyes. I'm going to add a bit more depth to the edge of the eye, the edge of the pupil by using darken. And I'm just gonna try to make it look a bit more like it's depressed inward. And really anything goes with the, with the pupils and the iris. Um, and then I'm just gonna add the specular highlights. And it's just gonna actually sit on top of everything. And it, it can just go right on top of the edges there. You can have a little bit of extra there. It's really up to you how you wanna do it. And then last thing I'm gonna do is just mess with the eyelids a little bit. So the eyelid crease just needs to have a bit more contour to it. And that's so easy to add. It's stupidly easy to add, but it's so beneficial. It's so easy, it's so rewarding, it's so easy. Like how, how when has rewarding and easy actually happened at the same time? But when it comes to contours and finding good techniques, it can be as easy as that. So I'll show you. Low opacity, large brush, high feed, meaning it's the right color and we've really pushed it to the edge. And then this is brush stroke number one, brush stroke number two, brush stroke number three, and brush stroke number four. As I add more paint, I delete. I mean, sorry, as I add more paint, I shrink the brush and now I delete and I'll show you what that crease did. It's insane. Do you see that? It just added so much definition to that crease. 
And you can repeat this as many times as you need to until the eye looks realistic. You can do it around the whole eye. You can extend it. There's a little bump right here. There's like a little extra cylinder right there. I want to keep that because it's kind of cute. Okay, and then another little crease just there connecting upward. And now I'm just going to blend a little bit more. Blending is important to making it look like skin. And then I'm going to connect this shadow all the way around. So this, this shadow needs to contour around so we can see the edge of the eye just there. And then connecting that upward. And then I'll do the eyebrow. So let's do the other eye, but before that I actually want to add a bit of extra crease to that lower eyelid. So you see this? And then I'm going to cut into it. So we're left with the crease. So important to show folding because that's what makes it feel like it's skin. It's a really realistic model. Okay, and then same thing on the other side with that crease, just not as intense. So new layer. I'm going to pick this color I planned earlier and then brush to low opacity and then brush stroke number one number two, number three, number four, not too much since it's a closed eye, so it doesn't have as much contrast or sharpness. And that's also giving us this really, really nice look to the crease that actually makes the eye socket feel sculpted. And all that redness we started off with at the start of the tutorial is really making the skin look very realistic, very plump. And then, um, then I'm going to grab this highlighter and I'm ignoring the eyebrows right now. I'm painting as if it's the eyebrow bone and the forehead are part of one structure. See that? So the eyebrow, remember the shadow? That's visible here now. Do you see, do you see that guys? And then I'm just uh, doing that. And then I'm going to add in some of the shadow of the hair. So you can add it in anywhere you want. Like, there's no rules. The only rule is that you blur the shadow and make sure it follows the shape of the space under it. All right, so that means that, what does that mean? That means that we've got, uh, so let me merge that guy down. Um, that means that I'm just gonna pick any of these shadows here, any of these good shadows, it could be the red one, it could be whatever. This is actually decent. And I'm gonna put it on darken I'm going to lower the opacity, um, yeah, and then I just want to delete at the shadow where I don't need it, so select inverse, delete, and then, um, is that okay, is that deleted or what? All right, doesn't matter, and then I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to blur that shadow. That's how you make the shadow look realistic. And then I'm going to just reduce that opacity. See that? Shadow was so important, but it takes so little work. Most of the rules of, of, these, of these fundamentals, once you know them, practice them like 20 times, they're so easy to take on. Sometimes shadows can be a little bit more red, so you could really saturate that shadow if you want to, um, and it'll still look great. So I'm gonna leave this shadow in its own layer. Then I'm going to find where that original line art is for the eyebrows. It's probably in the original layer, okay. And then I'm gonna bring the eyebrows down. I'm gonna add the shadow of the horns. Basically any shadow that exists on the face is gonna be addressed. Clean up a little bit and then we're done. It's not that hard to bring realism back into the world of your drawings. It's not wasted time. It's, it's, it's not impossible, it's not hard, it's really easy. So I don't know what color hair I wanna do for her, but for now I'm just gonna use like a really ash brown kind of hair color. And that's what I'm gonna use for the eyebrows. Lock that layer. And I'm just gonna use that for the eyebrows, just something simple. 
and then I'm going to show you how to make these eyebrows. They're exactly the same shape. I haven't changed anything. The style is intact. But what has changed is the fact that it's going to look like hair. Okay, so that's going down right there. And so what I'm going to do is just use some simple brush strokes to start off the feeling of the eyebrows being kind of like realistic. Oops, let me lock the layer. And then I'm going to cast a shadow off the eyebrows onto the skin. Oopsie. Uh, okay, so a small little shadow. Then I'm going to smudge them a little bit with my smudge brush. So I'm just letting them get a little messy. You don't want them too sharp because then it just looks strange when eyebrows are so sharp. They, 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 uh, they tackle or they combat the focal point, which is um, the, um, the eyes. So we don't want to make them as sharp as things we've done to the eyes already. The eye has all of the cool stuff happening on it. We don't want to distract the audience away from the eyes to stare at eyebrows. That'd be really weird if you were just staring at someone's eyebrows. And so that's exactly the same rule here. And so one thing I like to do is get smudge brush on soft brush and then kind of increase the strength and just jiggle, jiggle the object. I jiggle my smudge brush and it kind of creates this kind of assimilated look to the eyebrows. Not so much creating strokes, it's just jiggling the brush. And then I'm just going to get soft brush and kind of darken the eyebrows a bit at the start where they are heaviest. So how do you guys like today's tutorial? Do you guys like um, this format? Do you feel like this has made it a little bit easier for you to imagine yourself studying realism? It shouldn't be scary. It shouldn't be something daunting. It should be something that you see as, hey, if I study this, even if I mess up the first 10 studies, I'm still learning something. So I'm using Dodge Tool because I'm running out of time, but I never use Dodge Tool without this guy. Sponge tool on desaturate. Dodge tool likes to mess with my colors, so I have to desaturate right after using it or else the skin is going to look really weird. But if you are doing anime, sometimes you want that vibrant look. So it's really up to you. I'm going to get just like a pinky color and now I'm having fun. I'm doing the girly stuff. So I'm adding a little bit of extra blush with color. I'm adding a little bit of extra blush here and there to the edge of the face. I'm adding a little bit of extra redness actually to the eyes and the eyelids. A little bit of extra redness to the lower eye. Redness on the white of the eye. So the redness on the white of the eye is really going to change how it feels because it's going to make it look more realistic. Just a little bit of redness. I'm going to see if I like some like other color choices for the, I mean, you could do anything. And then again, I, I picked a random skin tone that was easy to teach. It's kind of peachy. This isn't just, you know, any, uh, it's, 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 it doesn't matter. You guys can pick any skin tone. The same deal applies. And if you've ever studied my masterclass, I teach you how to pick deeper skin tones. I just picked that standard Asian face skin tone values. Um, which is usually what these animes are based off of, that Asian um, makeup style, that kind of glass skin, really, really, really pink blush. I'm adding this cute little bump in the lashes. So if you want to know how to pick these anime beauty, Asian beauty um, ma uh, makeup styles, watch makeup tutorials made by Asian women. Uh, what are the trends in Korea? What are the trends in Japan? Those are usually the trends you'll find popular in anime styles. And th those are the ones to pick. And that's the makeup you should be doing. So that's why I'm picking these really peachy tones. Those are the popular ones that I've noticed from, from that part of the world. I'm adding a little bit of extra redness to the nose. Oops, see, that's not redness. I'm adding a little bit of extra redness to the nose tip with color. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my smudge brush on soft brush. I'm going to give it like 
12% strength. I'm going to take it to this eye and I'm just going to jiggle it. I'm, <laughs> I'm just jiggling my smudge brush. And that's going to make the lashes feel like they're actually growing and everything here is well blended. I'm jiggling, like I'm literally doing this. Okay, and then same here. It makes the lashes feel more like they're connected, they're part of the same thing. Okay, another thing I wanna do is show you what you can do with the lips. The lips don't have to be this defined. You can literally get rid of all the edges and leave only the highlights and it still looks cute somehow. Um, you, there's a lot of stuff you get away with. And I'm going to add a little bit more of that peachy redness to the skin tone. And then I'm gonna get that pure white once more and I'm gonna add it to the nose tip. You get this for all skin tones. All skin tones get pure white because that's the color of the light source. A little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit extra on the chin. And just a little bit of extra shadow. Just kind of re-sculpting the chin a little bit. I didn't like it too much. And extending that, adding one more dimple around the mouth. See that laugh line I added? You can add that much and it'll still look cute. So you're just folding skin the way it would in real life. And I'm adding a little bit of extra highlight on all those areas we usually put highlight. I'm adding extra highlight on the waterline. This is the fun stuff, the last minute stuff. It's super easy to do. That's why we delay it. It's not that important. I'm gonna add like those extra ones that they sometimes show. Look at me, look at me, I know anime. Look at that. Hey, I'm not that old. <laughs> I'm not that much of a geezer. I know this stuff. Okay, and then um, and then I'm just adding, <laughs> I'm just adding a little bit of extra shadow there, a little bit of extra shadow there, just to intensify those creases. And if you feel like the line is still too present, do the jiggle. All right, so I'm just jiggling a little bit. This jiggle method is actually really great if you have these edges you don't wanna blend, you don't wanna paint over, but you wanna make them have a smudged edge, this little jiggle method. And then finally, the shadows of the horns, which are gonna be on the same, you know, method as, or, you know, they could, they could do something like that. They're not really in the way of the face. It just depends on how you want to do the light. Who cares? As long as they're blurry, they're going to look realistic. So we're going to do that and then we're going to delete. So give me a minute. Poop. Ugh, I hate this. <laughs> this is why I don't mess with lines, mostly because my aim is so crappy. Um, but I do miss sketching. And All right, so we lower opacity and then we blur. I mean, yeah, yeah, we blur. Uh, so we're just blurring those cast shadows and we're lowering the opacity. And we can make them more red if you'd like. Um, yeah, you can make them more red. You can make them a little bit more on the purple side and you can add a little ring of saturation, which is like soft brush on color mode or on color layer, and there's like a ring of saturation around every cast shadow. So just like around every cast shadow, you just have a ring of saturation. Even these cast shadows right here. Even the nose one and this one. Just a little ring of, 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 of uh, color. That's just how cast shadows work. Okay, so that's it. That's how you render anime. It's not hard um, because the point of it is that we are um, just imagining the sphere and the role of the sphere. What does the sphere do for us? It tells us where the light is going, where it's coming from, all of that good stuff. So if you can, 
If the sphere has no style, that means you can dress it up with pretty much any style you want. It doesn't care where it comes from as long as it's there. So study the sphere. It goes a long way. Even if you don't plan on going this realistic with your anime drawings, you can still apply some level of it to the anime drawing. See what I'm saying? So you're, there's, it's not a, there's no losing here. There's only winning. I think I messed up the layers. I stuck. Okay, there we go. Um, and just there. And then I'm going to add tiny little bit of bounce light. Ooh, look at that. Isn't that so awesome? That little bit of bounce light right there on the nose makes it look so realistic. It's crazy. And it's just a small little bounce light you learn how to use when you do sphere studies. It's so basic. It's so easy to pull off. And then just last minute stuff. I kind of want to close off the face at the edges with a little bit of extra shadow just at the edges here and there. That's just the rotation of the skin. Sometimes it causes a change in value as it rotates. And I'm just doing like these last little checks to make sure everything feels clean. And same with this side. Last little checks. And you can add a little bounce light line right here. It's also gonna look great. Just a small little bounce light line. Look at that. And you learn that from a sphere. So that's what these really, really good manga, anime, hybrid realism artists do to get this good at, at um, you know, at their style is they study the sphere and then they draw the line over the sphere. So even this drawing, the drawing, the line art looks good because Sasuchi st studied and she learned how to draw objects on a sphere. So her rotation looked great. That's why it was easy to paint over it. It was easy for me to see where these spheres live. You see what I'm saying? So even without rendering, you still have to study the sphere. If you want to be an animator, if you want to be a sketch artist, if you want to do anything, you still have to study basic contours. Okay, guys? Um, so just like little things here and there, just the stuff, the hover stuff that I do, really hover rendering, to be honest, just because I'm just having fun, so I just kind of mess around a little bit longer. Um, I'm adding, this is a critical step. You don't have to do it, but if you want to push, get a soft brush and hover it over the lashes. It adds this really, really nice fluffy look to the lashes. Okay, so this is the highlights merged down. This is the, um, I, I don't know what this layer is. Delete that. And then we've got the shadows here. I can just reduce that. Um, I'm gonna just desaturate a smidge. You probably didn't even pick it up, but just my eyes want to do it. Um, got the cast shadows on the same layer. And uh, no idea what this layer is. Apparently there is something here though. Oh, those are the, the highlighters for the cast shadows. I'll leave those alone. Um, then there's the lashes. So I'll just add a couple more lashes on this side. And then we'll do an overlap of her lines and my drawing. And we'll go from there. We'll, we're going to be done. And I'm just adding those little lashes here and there. Okay. So it would be really cool if I did the rest of the face, but I don't have time. Um, so let's take a look at the before and after. It's not really a before and after. So we've got the lines. Okay. And we've got the render. Let me zoom in. We've got the lines and we've got the render. And you can change the skin tone as much as you want to. It's not that hard to darken the character. So the only thing you have to change if you want to darken the character really is the eyeball. So you can leave the eyeball alone, completely delete away at it in the new layer. And you can darken the skin tone as much as you want to and shift it over into 
reds if you want to darken into like a more of a Nubian kind of skin tone. As long as you remember that, you know, there's a certain level of rules you have to have to darken a character. You can make her purple. You can make her green. Doesn't matter because the form is all intact. So um, that's really it for today. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you, Sasuchi. Thank you 1,000 times for letting me use your line art. I could not for the life of me find anything that was non- AI. God, AI has taken over. I'm so sick of it and so disgusted. Um, I'm going to desaturate the skin tone a little bit just so the um, the blush has a little bit more of a, of, a, of a presence. And so I'm just going to delete away it wherever I had blush. These are the things I do um, that I, uh, you know, the, the, the on and off stuff that I do. The ears will be red as well, by the way, guys. Uh, don't forget that and they will have a little bit of that light in them just something that looks like you know that looks like this just something like that just that the further they go out uh there's a lot of other conditions here and there but that's it did you guys enjoy this did you guys like it would you like more like this form is available for everyone it's free real estate anybody can have it just study the sphere study the cylinder study the cube study the pyramid study everything and and they're really basic shapes but they come packed with all this knowledge so the knowledge isn't lost um anytime you study a form study it's not wasted time it comes back it helps you read form studies easier sorry it helps you read references easier it helps you sculpt easier you become a 2d sculptor do you know what i'm saying so before the lines uh were painted in after the lines are painted in. Thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate you guys hopping in. I'll see you guys next class on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Whoa, hour and a half class. I did start a little bit late though, but that's okay. I'll see you guys next time. And Sasuchi, I'll upload this um, and uh, share it with you on Instagram as a collaborator. I've never done that before. I have no idea how to do it. Do we have to upload together or do I just tag you? I'm not really sure how it's done, but as soon as this reel goes up, I'm going to tag you, and on the YouTube video, I'm going to share your link to your Instagram and to your uh, YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.